breath yeah. from They Feed They Lion. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the, that time in your life? It's a reaction to you know, the riots in Detroit in 1967. Also, it was the period of the Vietnam War. At that time, I had sons growing to draft age. And, and I saw the, the penalty my wife was paying. The idea that she would raise these kids so that this corrupt government could take them and send them over there to become killers or to, be, or to get killed. You know, and that, that's one of the things that first sent me to Spain, to get away from it. Yeah. To try to live somewhere else where this, you know, I found out I couldn't live there. I couldn't make enough money. Uh, and, and I missed the language. I needed, the, I needed uh, American English. Yeah. That was my poetry. It was my, it's like a painter needs blue and red and yellow. Yeah, right. I needed to kiss my ass and what have you, you know. <laughs> so I came back. Going back to Detroit not long after the rides and discovering something about myself that I hadn't as yet discovered, which was I looked just like the people who created this prison. Yeah. I was now in my 40s. I was making enough money to call myself middle class. I, I was used to seeing myself as a rebel, as I had been. Um, very rebellious young guy. Uh, but, you know, I'd settled down to, and, and the life of uh, a poet, probably like a composer, it's a life, a life of discipline, you know? Yeah. I mean, you, can't, you can be Rambo, you know, for a short while, right. and, and then he quits then writing right. poetry, yeah. If he wants to live like a crazy man. And so... I saw these people, even the ones who have been my friends, when I looked at them, I thought, I know what they're seeing. They're seeing, they're seeing Phil Lafine. Oh, that guy I went to college with, or that guy I worked with. Yeah, I see what he is. Mm. He looks just like the sons of bitches that have enslaved me. Yeah. So that was a shock, and that's part of the poem, too. So is breath related to that? Since it comes from this? No, I don't think so. I think it comes out of something else. I think it comes out of, uh, of a different humbling from the mountains of the, you know, the Sierra Nevadas. It comes from, from, being, from going into those mountains, which were so much like the landscape of California, was so much like the landscape of northern Spain. The Pyrenees were so much like uh, the Sierra Nevadas, that it brought all that back to the, a sense of of one's you know finiteness, dinkiness, you could almost say, and yet one is receiving, even if one is dinky, one is receiving this this enormous world, and so you're both humbled and enriched, and you feel like nothing, and you feel like a prince of the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's extraordinary mixture. Who hears the humming of rocks at great height? The long, steady drone of granite holding together. The strumming of obsidian to itself. I go among the stones, stooping and pecking like a sparrow, imagining the glacier's final push resounding still. In a freezing mountain stream, my hand opens, scratched and raw, and flutters strangely, more like an animal or wild blossom and wind than any part of me. Great fields of stone stretching away under a slate sky, their single flower, the flower of my right hand. Last night, the fire died into itself, black stick by stick, and the dark came out of my eyes, flooding everything. I slept alone and dreamed of you in an old house back home among your country people, among the dead, not any living one beside yourself. I woke, scared by the gasping of a wild one, scared by my own breath and slowly calmed, remembering your weight beside me all these years 
and here and there an eye of stone gleamed with the warm light of an absent star. Today, in this high, clear room of the world, I squat to the life of rocks jeweled in the stream or whispering like shards. What fears are still hell locked in the veins till the last fire? And who will calm us then under a gold sky that will be all of earth? Two miles below, on the burning summer plains, you go about your life one more day. I give you almond blossoms for your hair, your hair that will be white. I give the world my worn out breath on an old tune. I give it all I have and take it back again. Did you find breath? while you were on the mountain? I mean, did that, did that come to you there, or did you no, come it, back down and sit down at your desk and... No, it's very curious what happened. I was supposed to go, and I wasn't feeling that good physically. I was supposed to go with a friend, two friends, three friends. And they were gonna go, and I don't know, I had an upset stomach and this, and I ate too much. We drank too much the night before, and I said, oh, the hell, I don't wanna go. You guys go. And I was teaching, and none of them were. And so that, that they left in the morning, and sometime during the day I started feeling better, and I thought, I wonder what I'd be doing if I were up there again. Mm -hmm. And I started imagining, and my imagination was so sharp, I mean, I could sh shut my eyes and see myself. The, the, of course, these were things I'd all already experienced, but they came back with such detail and such power that I wrote the poem instead of going. <laughs> 